Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and this week we're meeting the notorious guard dog of Pakistan and India, the Bully Cutter. Today we are meeting one of Animal Watch's most requested dogs. He is known as the Beast from the East. He's big, muscular, intelligent, powerful and aggressive. <coughs> Claimed by both Pakistan and India as their most precious dog, he's often dressed in garlands and painted with bright coloured powders to worship and revere him. This sometimes precedes illegal dog fighting and they are very good at it. Hence why you need to be a strong owner if you want one and need to think about not having them get into a fight with other dogs as it's in their blood. Does this mean that I will be toast today meeting these gigantic Indian Mastiffs? And will they be stronger than all the Mastiffs I've met before? Even dangerous? We will soon find out. Don't go away. And also today, as an Animal Watch viewer, you have a chance to win this fantastic Animal Watch competition giveaway. Stay tuned. The Bully Cutter, otherwise known as the Beast from the East. A competitor to the title of world's most powerful Mastiff. Made for hunting and guarding, as well as being a fierce fighter, he stands tall like Dogo Argentina, muscular like the Pitbull, with a wrinkled face like the Malakli. In fact, Bully Cutter literally means heavily wrinkled dog. The word bully comes from the root word of the Hindustani and Punjabi languages boli, which means heavily wrinkled. Kata means dog in the Hindi-Urdu language. He's described online as unfriendly and aggressive to strangers and strange dogs. He's also described as powerful, independent, difficult and demanding. In fact, a real handful that can only be handled by the strongest of people. Adored by royalty, this ancient dog comes originally from the Punjab region, a shared region between northern India and eastern Pakistan but mostly now exists in Pakistan, where he continues to be developed. He stands extremely tall at the shoulder. Males can get up to 40 inches and weighs a lot due to his dense muscle. He has a mastiff skull and crushing teeth. His independent demeanor will mean only the strongest of leaders can take on one of these dogs. There are several types of bully cutter, but the main two types I will be covering today is the ancient pure bully cutter, who goes back thousands of years to the original Mesopotamia dogs of war, often referred to as the Tula bully cutter. He looks every bit the ancient powerful warrior with his white coat and wrinkled face. And the Asil bully cutter, a more recent version, which is far less wrinkly and is used more in illegal fighting rings. And remember today that Animal Watch is doing a fantastic competition giveaway. We will be asking you a question at the end of the episode. So if you can answer this question right, you have a chance of winning one of these fantastic Animal Watch t-shirts, this amazing Animal Watch mug, or this fabulous poster of Kumi and myself. You will also get a shout out in one of our episodes. So don't go away and keep on listening. I am extremely keen to meet the most powerful Punjab Mastiff in the world. Will he be on my top five list of lethal dog breeds? I really hope I don't get bitten. Firstly, I'm off to London in the UK to meet a human-friendly Asil type bully cutter called Katana. She's nice to people who are kind-natured but needs to be watched around other dogs. And later on, I'll be off to meet a less friendly bully cutter called Romeo, who needs a muzzle before meeting me. There are under 20 bully cutters currently in the UK, so they are very rare. One of the rarest variety is the ancient bully cutter Mastiff, who will be making an appearance later on in the show. 
I will be showing you two of the only three pure ones from the ancient line in the whole of the UK. So keep watching. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hello. Hi. Sorry. Are you okay? Nice to meet you. Hello. Who's this? Uh, this is Katana. Katana. She's a bully Kata. Katana. She's you just over two years old. Come on. Come on. Do you jump up? Are you allowed to jump up? Ah, she goes, no, I'm not allowed to jump. Katana, come here. Come here, baby. Do you want to? Treats? She's got all these lovely little yeah pigments black spots. Yeah, even if you she? look down her back, she has them all under her yeah, skin. Yeah, like little speckly hey, baby. Like a little Dalmatian. <laughs> she was a rescue as well. Yeah, we rescued her. Um, some people wasn't looking after her, so we've got her down, saved her from up there. And now if she's looking many times better, she goes to vet checkups every month. So yeah. she's come a long way. <laughs> she's sort of like. Floppy all over. Floppy. It is. <laughs> it is. And she's got these lovely big feet. They're to all spread out. And, oh, look, there we go. <laughs> that is exciting. <laughs> Jumps this. up when she knows that she can. She's a large sized dog, isn't she? She's yeah, age she's, two. Yeah, she just turned two. She's very big for age. She's pushing about 70 kilos now. About 70 yeah, kilos, right. Another year of growing into her full size. So you size. think she'll get, what, wider now? Yeah, more wider, yeah. Look, maybe a little bit of height, but majority will be weight per putting on now. She's a very, very friendly dog. Now, what's she like to live with on a daily basis? Very chilled out. She's, Is she? she so she'll just lie down in your house? Day, literally, she'll sleep all day and just relax. We take her out at night. She'll go out for two hour walks. All oh, right, so um, actually a very good dog to yeah, sort of have around home, the house. Yeah, she's very good, very chilled out. And of course, with, with a lot of dogs that they've used in, in, in dog fighting, they are actually very, very friendly to people. This is what it is. So it's just the trouble is when you take them out to the park, you'll get the odd reaction from, from, from other from dogs. Another dog. yeah, but this to is what humans, it is. they are actually very, 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 friendly, yeah. very, very friendly. Could they live with other dogs or would um, it be the opposite sex sort of thing? Yeah, it's opposite sex definitely because you wouldn't want to have two of these kicking off in your back garden because it'll be a very complicated situation. There's one dog that she does get along with, yeah. but it's building bonds and building that trust with the dog. The yeah. constant walking with the other dog. Is it male or female? The dog's a female. Yeah, oh, that's but actually pretty amazing. It's a puppy, amazing, it's my right? sister's dog, so she's grown uh, up with it since I've had her. And when she was a puppy, was she quite active or was she quite chilled uh, out? She's chilled out, like, she'll have her bursts of energy yeah. <laughs> and moments where she'll just go crazy. Has she had puppies? Uh, no, she hasn't. She we looks got, like she's yeah, had, they all got she? they got big nipples. I don't know what it is with the breed. <laughs> Even some of the males have them, literally. <laughs> I don't know what it is. She just keeps pushing herself since I've met her today. She just sort of comes and pushes into you and just wants she lots loves... and lots of tickles. She's just big, so That's she needs is. exercise. Exercise, a lot of exercise. Yeah, so you've got to get her out and you've got to walk Definitely. her and you've obviously got to be a, a responsible owner and yeah, make sure 100%. when you're around in an area. Because it's not this dog that's the problem, it's other people. With the dogs off the lead, like for example. And they always go, my dog's fine. Friendly, and yep. you're like, yeah, your dog's fine, but you just let it run up to mine. Mine is not, not fine. fine. This is yeah, the thing. Exactly. And then I it makes her look like the bad dog. Yes, exactly. Because I'm trying to hold her up and hold her back. <laughs> Do you know what the life expectancy uh, is? I think it's about eight like? to 10 years. Is it? Yeah, roughly. She's a hunting dog, so yeah. she's, she's got a very soft mouth. So yeah. it's almost like the type of mouth that you would use to retrieve stuff to yeah, get game and things. Does she dribble a lot? Uh, more than a lot. She's dribbling all the time, she is. Yeah, Literally. so it's sort of it's like, everywhere. yeah, saliva, saliva comes out. <laughs> so you have to clean it up uh, all constantly. the time. She's got a very, very short coat. So yeah, obviously that, that's... That comes to a bonus. Yeah, so not house. a lot of fur around no, the not house. A lot. And she's not a very destructive dog. No, nah, she's not. She's... Does she dig in the back garden? Uh, now and then, <laughs> if now she's and had then. the scent. <laughs> yeah, she but still does. Majority of the time, yeah, she's good with it. So what, what would you say is the best thing about having one of these dogs? The best thing is the companionship. How loving they are and how like she'll just chill with you literally all day and relax, but she can also protect you mm. when it comes down to it. Yeah, so if you're walking down the road, um, will she naturally protect you or will it take somebody having to act quite unusual? And actually, she's to... a good judge of people, can yeah. character. So if she feels like there's someone acting off, she'll let you know before you even notice them yeah. that they're there. She'll see her ears go up, she'll act all big, and you'll see her, she's diff a different dog. Like when, she, like when she met you, for example, yeah. she knew that you're soft yeah. and she come with you very gentle. 
other people is very aggressive, lunging. <laughs> when she, when somebody knocks on your door, does she bark a lot? Uh, yeah, she does. <laughs> so she's a good watchdog. Watchdog, yeah. Would you, would you describe her as noisy or only when needed? And only when needed. Only when yeah, needed. Not so over she just doesn't day. bark constantly. Uh, no, not a constant bark. And of course, these dogs are very rare in the UK, aren't this they? Is, yeah, there's not many of them about. Like you get loads of them now that have been crossed and loads of people crossing them, but not many of them are pure because mm. they're about anymore. What's she like with small children? Is she children? Good? She yeah, she's amazing with kids. Yeah. Uh, I have nieces and nephews myself and she's very gentle with them and she'll take her time like a different dog yeah she comes levels. across as a very gentle dog yeah I've got she to is say. She, she looks like she she's very sensitive <laughs> these dogs have got a background in fighting which will make them reactive so if you'd like to have a dog on on its own or perhaps one with an opposite sex and it's a very nice other dog you could have this dog but um you're not going to be going to the park and you're not going to be letting it no, off and you're not going to be no. letting it run wild because you could have a few issues I think she's absolutely gorgeous no, and it, really it's been absolutely it. wonderful meeting her. No, you too. She's been fantastic. Do you, you have a website it. for her? I don't have a website, I have an Instagram page. What's her, her Instagram page? At Katana Bulikota. Okay, so I'll write that underneath. So if you can find her, then you want to see some beautiful pictures of this amazing dog. Um, then you can follow them yep, on, Instagram. on Instagram, might get you a few more followers. And I appreciate and... that, hopefully. Yeah, she's get beautiful, yeah. I really enjoyed meeting Katana. She was a real snuggle dog. I loved the way she pushes into you for cuddles and attention. She was friendly to me, but I could see her change in character every time a strange dog approached. So we had to be careful around other people's dogs. After meeting Katana, I was off to Huddersfield to meet a less friendly adult called Romeo, who was notorious in his area due to his appearance and stature. I'm a little worried about what to expect. Well, it's really exciting. I'm here to meet the Bully Cutter, one of the most requested dogs on Animal Watch. I don't know what to expect. Will they be nice to me? Let's soon find out. Come on, let's go and see. Let's go and meet them. <gasps> Hi. Hello. Who's this? Uh, this is Kaya. She's big, isn't she? Yeah, she's big. Kaya, hello. Hello, little baby. <laughs> I'm Annika. Hi, Annika. Yes, how are you doing? I'm pleased to meet you. How are you doing? I'm introduced to a friendly female called Kaya, and she clearly is as lovely as Katana in London. But all the while, I can see and hear a bully cut a male at the rear of the garden. That must be the notorious Romeo. But first, there is a surprise for me. I was having so much fun with the pups that I almost forgot that Romeo was still there, staring me out in the background. But after a while, I asked Uzair to finally get the main man out. Romeo came out and he was all muscle. He was huge and looked at me with his bright amber piercing eyes. He reminded me of a Dogo Argentina or a more athletic looking XL bully. I started to give him some treats and soon he was calm enough for us to sit down to chat about the history of the breed. Hi, I'm here with Uz and Romeo and Kaya and the odd little baby bully cutter that you'll be able to see <laughs> running around on the floor. I've been absolutely eaten by all these by all these babies. Now, Romeo's got a muzzle on today, hasn't he? Because yeah. he, he's sometimes not very good with strangers, but to be quite honest, he seems really cute. Yeah, he's calmed down. I bought him in Pakistan when he was two months old, and my family brought him up as the only dog on the farm, so he was brought up as a bit of a guard dog. So he's used to that, making his owners aware of any strangers coming. 
for any livestock, etc. So he's got that drilled into him. So what is Romeo here? So Romeo is sort of what you call an, a seal slash nagi. Um, so they're the more modern athletic type of bully cutters. They've got the slender build, um, a bit taller, um, leaner, more athletic than the older types. Um, they're believed to have some sort of what you call a Dazi blood mix, which a Dazi is basically um, a greyhound that you find in the Indian subcontinent. Yeah. Um, so people, some say that the old bully cutters were bred with the Tazis to make the more athletic type that we see today. And is Kaya the same? Because yeah. she looks a little bit more loose skin, doesn't she? Yeah, so, yeah, so Kaya is from a slightly different bloodline. So she is still the modern type, yeah. uh, but she comes from <laughs> um, an area called Chakwal in Pakistan. Yeah, generally they can be dog aggressive. Yeah. Um, they, they want to be the only one important one on there. So they fight for that yeah. alphaness. Oh. Showing a little bit of his guarding there because somebody's just walking past yeah. and you can see he's always on alert all the time. Yeah. He is so muscular, it's yeah. unbelievable. She's got more loose skin. Yep. How heavy is he? The last time he was at the vets was probably October last year. He was weighed in at 73 kg. 73 yeah. kilograms. And what's it like a trip to the vet? Does he behave himself? When he goes in and when they, when they get a bit friendly with him, he's all right with them. Yeah. Um, so he's, he's not too bad, but um, getting him to there and waiting in the waiting area is a bit of a nightmare. Yeah. So what, um, what sort of modern um, breeds do you think they've mixed in with the original bully cutter to, to make them more like um, these illegal fighting dogs? The Tazi, the greyhound type. Um, so that's, I would say, definitely is in there. Some bloodlines do have the Great Dane blood to give him that extra size. Um, so them two de dog breeds are definitely proved as being mixed into these dogs. Um, sometimes you find a breed mixed into them which is what you call a Gultair. Now a Gultair is um, the old English Bull Terrier which was taken over by the English British soldiers. Um, and that sometimes you find is mixed into them. Yeah. There's about four or five different types that you do mainly yeah. see. Um, there's one called the Dabba Bully Cutter which looks, resembles the American Bulldog. Yeah. So what is it like living with one and going for a walk with one every single day? Um, to be honest, I tend to take him out in the dark and not so much during the day. It's just to prevent um, coming across people and other dogs. He does get really defensive if someone, for example, was to cross over and start walking towards us. Mm. Um, he does get really defensive, starts barking, growls, everything. Gives them a bit, bit of a warning to back off. Uh, but it's mainly the animals that he's a bit... Um, yeah. he, doesn't really like at all. Most of the time he is in a muzzle. But you can see, I mean, like there's a great variety between the dogs because mm -hmm. she's ever so friendly. Yeah. And you've got Katana near London and she's yeah. very, very, I mean, obviously she's a little bit dog aggressive, but also very, very cuddly and very, very sweet. So you can see there's just a huge difference. So yeah. actually, to be quite honest, it'd probably be fine with me now if you took Yeah, ex Yeah, so um, he does calm down quite a bit. Well, the puppies um, <laughs> have so much skin on them, it's unreal. So they do tend to have a lot of skin around them. Um, <laughs> especially the puppies, it's one of the ways that you test for its purity. Yeah. So a lot of people grab them from the neck and lift them up just to see how much skin there is wow. and give them a bit of a shake. He's a very, very powerful dog. Yeah. What type of owner do you need to be in order to have a dog like this? You have to be really responsible, to be honest, because um, when, when this breed originally came into the UK about 20 years ago, there was a lot of petitions to actually ban the breed. The lo loads of people didn't want them in the UK because of what they were used for. It's up to you to make sure that you look after a breed yeah. like this and make sure that they don't end up getting into trouble. These dogs aren't there for you just to sort of muck around with. With the pups I've got, I've, I've got certain criteria in place, obviously with the homes that they are going to and the people. Uh, first of all, experience in dogs. You need to be experienced, um, not just in dogs, but large breed dogs. They are very big and powerful. You need to know what you're doing when it comes to training a young pup, just to knock them bad habits out. Um, space is massive for these dogs. They want a lot of space. Um, flats and stuff, I wouldn't say, are suitable for this sort of breed. Uh, garden size needs to be reasonable. Time, a lot of time. Romeo, for example, goes on two walks a day. Don't want to walk him too much, but he likes to go out a lot. Kaya, at the moment, only goes out once a day. Would he get destructive if you didn't exercise? Really destructive. <laughs> the amount Hi. of beds, mattresses I've been through. Um, Hello. He's almost chewed his kennel in half. <laughs> And how about training? Now, I've heard these dogs can be very independent yeah. and self-serving. Do you find they're quite stubborn? Yeah, very stubborn. They know what they need to do. They know they need to guard the property that they live on. They, need, they know they need to guard their surroundings. I've not really ever come across a bully cutter that's been fully, fully 
uh, obedience trained. I think he's really, really beautiful. And of course, he's got his own um, website, hasn't he? What's the best one to come and have a look at some pictures of Romeo on? Uh, yeah, so we are on Facebook and Instagram uh, called Shikari Kennels. Um, so you can find us on there. We just recently set, uh, started up a YouTube channel as well. So we're going to be uploading a bit of the videos and stuff up there shortly as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just give us a follow. All right, fantastic. Yeah. Well, I've really enjoyed meeting Romeo and Kaya yeah. and the pups and I'll put their website underneath and then you can find them. By the end of our chat, Romeo was literally besotted with me. He was rolling all over me, playing with me and very happy to be with me. I guess he recognised me as a friend and not a threat. Now next we get to see some pure blood bully cutter, two of the only three to exist in the whole of the UK. They are based in Glasgow, but first of all, it's time for our exciting giveaway. Well, today we're doing an amazing giveaway just to say thank you to everybody for watching Animal Watch. Now the winner of this competition will either get one of these amazing Animal Watch t-shirts, an Animal Watch mug, or this fabulous poster of Kumi and myself. They will also get a shout out in one of my episodes coming up in the next month. So all you have to do is answer one simple question and make sure to write it clearly in the comments box below. Make sure to like this episode and follow Animal Watch. You can enter as many times as you like and share it with all your relatives. The more times you enter, the more chance you've got of being picked. Now the question is, what colour is the Nagi Bully Cutter? What colour is the Nagi Bully Cutter? Remember to write your answers below. Our winner will be selected using a random selection app and will be announced on the 8th of April. So good luck everybody and back to the show. Now we had seen the modern Asil variation of the Bully Cutter, it is time to show you a couple of beauties from the ancient line, which are considered to be the most oldest and purest lineage you can get. These two females called Tula and Roma are two of only three ancient line Bully Cutters in the whole of the UK. Based in Glasgow, Scotland, and belonging to Laird Ross of Bully Cutter Glasgow, you can see the difference in appearance between this line and the more modern Asil line. They have a much more wrinkled head and are more mastiff looking. It is said that this pure line goes right back to the ancient war dogs of Mesopotamia, and the line has remained pure before European colonization. The other bully cutter modern breeds are said to contain a mix of Western dogs used to improve size and strength for fighting. But apparently the ancient line has remained true to its origins. You can find their Instagram account here at Bully Cutter Glasgow. Well, I'd had an amazing time meeting one of the world's most powerful and revered dogs. I thought they were affectionate and majestic, but suited to only a strong owner who has a responsible attitude in public as these dogs need to be controlled around strange dogs. It would be a shame to see these dogs banned because of a few uncareful owners. Remember, every dog's life is in your hands and every dog is only as good as his owner. And if you enjoyed this episode of Animal Watch, then be sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner and tune in every single week where we'll be bringing you more amazing episodes on dogs, wolves, animal rescue and conservation. Bye.